Hi there, and thanks for joining me as we try to paint a drug picture of the loop diuretics. Ferrosamide and bumetanide are both loop diuretics. The loop diuretics excrete more sodium, and along with the sodium excretion, the water is going to follow. The loop diuretics are primarily used for decreasing edematous conditions, for instance, congestive heart failure, liver failure, and pulmonary edema. They are effective in reducing blood pressure, but only marginally in comparison to placebo, according to the latest reviews. The Loop diuretics work at the level of the kidneys. So let's go down to the level of the kidneys and see if we can get a good picture of them. We normally have two kidneys, and each kidney has an average of 1.2 million functional units called the nephron. In the nephron, blood is filtered through the glomerulus and then the filtrate, or pre-urine, goes through a number of different areas. And these include the proximal convoluted tubule, the descending loop of Henle, the ascending loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, and then the collecting ducts. The filtrate that remains at the end of the collecting ducts is then the urine. It's not able to be reabsorbed back into the blood or changed at all. In any one of those areas of the nephron, if the carrier proteins that are embedded in the cell surface of the nephron allow a substance to go from the lumen of the nephron to the other side which is the interstitial space, it's very possible that that substance will get reabsorbed into the blood because we've got a lot of capillaries or sometimes called capillaries there in the interstitial space that are there specifically to do just that reabsorb substances back into the blood. With the exception of the osmotic diuretics, which are pharmacologically inert, all diuretics exert their effects either directly or indirectly on one or more of those carrier proteins. And therefore, they affect the reabsorption of some of the electrolytes. The loop diuretics, ferrosamide and bumetanide, act on the broad part of the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, so right here. And there they inhibit the sodium-potassium chloride symporter by binding to the chloride site of the co-transporter. The end result and most important thing about that action is that they're first of all going to decrease the amount of sodium in the blood because we're actually excreting more sodium. With the excretion of sodium, there's going to be water that follows, so we're excreting water as well. We're going to decrease the potassium because the potassium is going to be kept in the tubule, in the filtrate, instead of being reabsorbed. We're going to decrease the calcium and decrease the magnesium as well. And finally, uh, there's one other action. It happens at a different portion of the nephron, but that is going to result in a decreased excretion of uric acid. But I'd like to add a few side effects and potential complications of the loop diuretics. Uh, first of all, there is, as, there, as we decrease the amount of fluid in the body, we're not decreasing all of the other things like 
glucose and uric acid proportionally. So there is an actual relative increase in things like glucose and in uric acid. So people with uh, hyperglycemia or diabetes type 2 could actually have an exacerbation of the hyperglycemia. People with gout could actually have an ex exacerbation of their hyperuricemia. And then there's another problem with ototoxicity, so toxicity to the ear. The loop diuretics are thought to be potentially ototoxic. And finally, with all diuretics, the electrolytes are going to have to be monitored on a regular basis and probably the ECG or EKG analyses should be performed on a regular basis as well.